Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 2 of my Arsenal Football Manager 2015 playthrough. Hopefully you guys are good and today I have for you guys the clash of the big guns. It's Arsenal v United. It's our first big game of the season and as you can see if you're an eagle-eyed viewer right at the top we are first in the Barclays Premier League after the first three games of the season. Things have got off to a really good start. Eight goals for, four goals against. Giroud top of the goal scoring charts with three goals all of which came within six minutes. More on that in just a second, but Raheem Sterling also there, present on the assist charts. It's been a good start to the year. Looking at our schedule, you can see what's happened since the last episode. Uh, I'll start off before I cover the league stuff, just mentioning the fact we are in the Champions League group stage. Uh, we beat the team we had to play, which was uh, AAB. I assume that's their name rather than Arb. That would be a bit of an odd name. Uh, but we beat them 6-3 on aggregate. The actual home leg was a little bit disappointing. We only won 2-1. Looking at the stats here, you can see they had two shots on target to our 14. It was a game we absolutely dominated. Just a bizarre sequence of events it made it almost impossible for us to break them down. We were sat there knocking on the door, but uh, it took a fairly late goal, if I remember correctly, from Oxlade-Chamberlain to get us the win there, which was a little bit of a shame because I would have liked to have won it more convincingly. Fortunately, the second leg, we kind of ran away with it. Stats were by no means any more dominant this game than they were the previous. In fact, if anything, we played better in the first game. It was just our finishing was on point this game. Well bet Kadira and Ozil with the goals. So anyway, moving on to the league form, uh, we got things off to a fantastic start. And to be honest, I was kicking myself after this game because I wish I'd live commed it. It was incredible. Uh, we beat Southampton 4-3, but that doesn't tell half the story. As you can see, looking at the kind of match facts here, we were 3-1 down with six minutes left. Giroud came on off the bench to score a hat-trick in six minutes. I'm not sure what the record for a Premier League hat-trick is or a hat-trick off the bench. But I'd be amazed if it's less than six minutes. It was an incredible game. Anyway, here's the highlights for you guys so you can see what happened. So um, I believe they got the opening goal and I believe it was Wan Yama off the top of my head. It was indeed. Uh, so this was very much the first game of me kind of fiddling with the tactic. There were a few changes that I made at 3-1 down which I've since implemented into the full tactic. I'll show you that in a second. But this was a goal that kind of came on the break. That gap that we have... Uh, in our fullbacks, uh, kind of proved problematic here, but this was a Balanta mistake, and Balanta left a little bit alienated. Poor first touch let him down. Uh, the reason he was playing was because Mertesacker actually had a knock, which was a little bit of a pain, but it meant that he missed the game. So I had to play Balanta for a debut in the Premier League, and it was probably a tad on the premature side. So anyway, that happened there, and then I, they got a second goal to make it 2-0. This time, Joe, the Brazilian, who they've signed on this save, and in fact, I've seen Southampton sign numerous times so far in FM15, uh, getting the all-important goal. Uh, you'll notice there that one of the uh, issues was the fact that my inside forward on the left, who is set to sit narrower, was just far too na narrow and wasn't picking up the fullback. Uh, that's one of the instructions that I've changed as a result of my tactical changes. Uh, the inside forwards are now no longer set to sit narrower, uh, instead they're just on no additional instructions the reason for that being is they just weren't picking up men but anyway that was the first goal that kind of I guess maybe kind of caused the catalyst for change you'll notice that John Flanagan got sent off for Southampton which kind of played into our hands a little bit um, so that goal that Raheem Sterling got made it three or 2-1 they then got a goal through Joe again. Uh, that was his second of the game, the third uh, for Southampton. And that made it 3-1 with not long left at all. I, I kind of went to the drawing board, made some tactical changes. We subbed off Welbeck for Giroud. And Giroud was a little bit jaded after the uh, Community Shield, which was a little bit of a pain. So I gave Welbeck the start. Uh, but Giroud came huge for us getting, as I mentioned, a hat-trick in six minutes. The first here, a nice little finish, an assist for Sterling. And I mentioned last episode that Raheem Sterling really was a risk for us. For this opening game, he performed really well. Uh, he got an assist and he got a goal. Since then, as I mentioned it before, he's got onto the assist charts in the league and he's currently top of the assists. Um, and he also helped out in Europe a little bit, getting us an assist in one of the important games. But anyway, defensive mistake there allowed Giroud to get his hat-trick. That was an absolutely incredible result for us. Really happy to get the win there. A game that... I'm going to be honest, at 3-1 down, I had my head in my hands and I was really questioning whether or not this save was for me.
But anyway, the next game was a 2-0 win against Burnley. I'm not going to show the highlights for this, but Raheem Sterling grabbing a goal, his second in two games. Uh, looking at the stats, it was a game that we didn't dominate, but we were probably the better team in and deserved to win. 2-0 uh, was an okay result. I guess the clean sheets are nice. Uh, touch on that result and then the last game that we played was away against Aston Villa where we won 2-1 Oxley Chamberlain grabbing two goals in this game uh, this was a game that we really didn't perform too well in but it was a good result nevertheless uh, a tad concerning I guess that against a team like Villa we had less possession and they looked a little bit more threatening I believe we did create more clear-cut chances but regardless uh, I expected a slightly more dominant performance against Aston Villa and uh, that's gonna be something I really hope that we can perform and do against Manchester United I'm more hoping this was an off day but anyway Villa got off to a storm of law with the headed goal there after just two minutes minutes and that really put a spanner in the works and kind of put a little bit of pressure on us to go out there and perform fortunately we did uh, this goal Oxley chamberlain sterling with the assist there crossed to the back post having had an effort himself uh, as you'll notice here wiltshire took a knock so he actually took him off just because wiltshire does have a little bit of a uh, i guess a history with injuries and it was something that i didn't really want to chance but Oxley Chamberlain with a really impressive performance here, a play who I hadn't really factored into my first team plans, but due to the injuries uh, that we had to obviously Royce and also an injury to Sanchez, uh, which left him out for a few weeks, there was an opportunity for him to come in and he got two goals. So Oxley Chamberlain really giving me, um, I guess, a reason to pick him in the coming games. Uh, you'll notice Marcelo uh, playing. He's back up to match fitness now that was one issue we had because I'd signed him fairly late in the transfer window uh, or not in the transfer window but in the kind of pre-season period he hadn't had many friendlies to get up to speed and get match fit uh, so that was something I had to slowly bed him into doing so anyway the current situation we're in is we've got Manchester United we're currently top of the league and we are in the Champions League group stage our teams in our group consist of Shakhtar Ajax and Monaco I'm not sure if I'm going to be live comming any of those games because we got drawn against Tottenham in the Capital One Cup and it would be unforgivable for me not to live com against Tottenham I think most people would agree with that and we've also then got Chelsea coming up after that um, maybe I'll do the Ajax game because that would be the second to last group stage games so that might make a little bit of sense just to space out the matches but yeah that Tottenham game is going to be a really important one that I really want to win uh, and that will be coming up very shortly in the next episode but anyway focusing on the present just a quick overview of the squad so you can see average ratings Oxlade Chamberlain as I mentioned playing really well four appearances three goals two assists Raheem Sterling also performing very very well for us Kadira too it's good to see some of the new signings really stepping up to the plate so anyway, we're going to today's game uh, on the back of what's been a good set of results. Uh, obviously, top of the league, so momentum is with us. Uh, you can see here Theo Walcott slowly coming back from uh, his injury. Of course, he has an injury in real life that he's coming back from. That's factored into FM. Uh, he'll be back in about a month, so that's a good sign. Uh, looking at our team, I'm actually going to not play uh, Royce from the start today just because he is still coming back from injury. Uh, he only has 88% condition and his match fitness is pretty poor at 72%. A player who, I don't know, maybe will bring on off the bench for a debut to make an impact against Manchester United. With the exception of that, there's nothing too strange going on in the starting lineup it's pretty much what i'd consider to be my best starting lineup right now um so yeah with on that note let's get into today's game it is at home to manchester united so i do fancy us to try and get the win here if possible um in terms of how we're actually going to set up i need to try and work out what the optimal uh kind of shape is going to be in terms of who fits best where uh, I think I'm going to go with Oxley chamberlain on the left. In fact, no, I'm going to play him on the right because that's where he played well before. We'll play Sanchez out on the left-hand side. Uh, he can cut in on his right for Alexis Sanchez, so that'll help with the inside forward role. But Oxley chamberlain played well out on the right before. Sterling going to play that shadow striker role, uh, role in behind. So yeah, let's get into today's game. Hopefully, touch wood, we can get a good result here. Uh, obviously, we've got some good results so far this season against um, kind of smaller oppositions. And I don't mean that in kind of a terrible way, but, um, you know, we've got we've basically got results against teams who I'd expect us to get results against. And obviously, my expectation that I've set upon myself is to challenge for the title. These are the kind of games that realistically to mount a title challenge we need to be doing well in. Manchester United, to be honest, this year in Football Manager are very, very good as a team, but we need to challenge them nevertheless and really prove ourselves. 
So anyway, looking like a good start here. Three minutes in, Marcelo storming down the line, tries to whip in the ball, but De Gea saves it. Looking at possession, three minutes in, we are dominating. Uh, I guess that's kind of to be expected uh, for the most part with it being so early on in the game, but the chance is still alive here. Giroud there with a nice flick. Alexis Sanchez on his right foot. He bangs it in. He makes it 1-0. What a start for us. Alexis Sanchez cutting in on that right foot. I knew that was a wise last-minute decision to switch the sides. There are Marcelo here. Whips in. Oxlade-Chamberlain makes it too. Well, I don't want to call myself a tactical genius, but I think to kind of fiddle around with the wingers and try and really kind of think a little bit more before we started the game uh, was well worth the effort because right now both those wingers have had a fantastic start and we're on the attack again here now. Evans will cut out the play. But what a start this has been. Seven minutes into the game to be 2-0 up is really impressive. Uh, you will have noticed if you paid attention to the starting lineups that United are playing a 4-3-1-2, which is quite a narrow formation. Oh, Aaron Ramsey has a screamer of an effort. Is that offside? Is it, oh, it's been given offside. Excellent. Aaron Ramsey with an effort. In off the post, but and it came to foul cow, but he was offside when the shot was taken. And a little bit of a let off there. Of course, Aaron Ramsey, our former player, hoping that's not going to come back to bite me today because, of course, we did sell him for £35 million at the start of the season. But what I was about to make the point of was that Manchester United's kind of compact formation, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to double ourselves up on the wing backs and the full backs and hopefully find some space out wide, which is what we've found so far. It's going to be quite crowded out in the centre and that might be an undoing point if they overload it. But right now we're looking looking good and Raheem Sterling scores it's 3-0 15 minutes in Van Hal, you have not got a clue son not a clue what a game this has been I was a little bit concerned after the Villa game that we weren't breaking down teams well enough Sanchez here he's, it's 4-0 what the hell has happened this is mental what have we done how has this happened what I was going to say was I was a bit concerned last game when we only beat uh, Villa 2-1 because they look quite good. But right now we are having a stormer of a game. Although United, as I mentioned about that overloading of the centre, that was kind of vi like visible there, how they just had so many more men forward in the centre of the park. But fortunately for us, Van Persie uh, kind of not really taking the chance. And what a game. I am very happy, boys. We are 4-0 up against Manchester United at home. We've had three clear-cut chances. We've been so clinical today. Uh, our, our attacking midfielder is doing well might even be able to bring on Royce for the last 20 minutes just to give him a little bit of a run out obviously we can't get too far ahead of ourselves 4-0 is a very good result but it's not completely unheard of for a team to come from behind so I am a little bit on the paranoid side as Van Persie has another chance but misses it Chesney with another fantastic save Sanchez has picked up a knock it's probably not even worth risking it to be honest because he is still coming back from injury hopefully that's nothing too serious because he's had a really good game today and after his previous injury I was kind of hoping to get him on a good run of form and uh, how well he'd been playing today was kind of a good optimism sign but it does mean that Royce can come in I was probably going to make a similar change but anyway we're on the attack here again Ozil Sanchez to Sterling Sterling again Raheem Sterling so much energy so much pace he wants the ball Marcelo on the overlap options in the middle the ox is there at the back post it won't fall to him and now a break away from Manchester United foul cows through and he's kicked it and it's almost gone out for a throw in all right, let's confirm that sub. Let's get Royce on. Maybe he can get a goal now on his debut. But so far, this game has surpassed all my expectations. Going into this game, I was a little bit tentative. You know, we were top of the league, but we hadn't had an incredible performance. I wouldn't say this has been a world-class performance, but what we've done is we've taken the chances that have come our way. And I guess being clinical is probably more important than having a good performance in some ways. Obviously, the two go hand-in-hand, hand and they have done here. Um... And I am kind of feel like we might be home and dry now. As Oxlade-Chamberlain has a chance, he hits it and it only just goes wide. That is a fantastic effort. 15 minutes left on the clock. Let's make a few more changes here. I'm going to bring on Wiltshire for Kadira because I don't want Kadira getting sent off. And I'm also going to... I think I'm going to take off Raheem Sterling. Uh, I'm going to play Oxlade-Chamberlain down the middle. Uh, we'll then move Royce into right attacking mid. And then I'm going to bring Welbeck on just to play left attack in mid. Uh, I don't want to really risk the legs of players like Sterling. You know, he's he's a little bit jaded. He's not at 100% condition. Just means he's slightly more likely to get an injury. So in this kind of situation where the game is pretty much dead at this point, it's quite nice to be in a situation where I can kind of protect the key players and not force them uh, to play in kind of a risky situation. 
But anyway, we're pl applying pressure really high up the pitch here, which is good to see. United forced to pass it around the back. Uh, but I'm a little bit disappointed, if, if I'm honest. We've kind of taken our foot off the gas. Rooney misses it. Wow. Okay. Manchester United really haven't been too clinical here. We are on key chances. But they're just simply not taking the opportunities that come their way. Royce here, on his debut, can he contribute a goal? Uh, is that going to be given as an own goal? It's not. He's scored a goal on his debut. It's a cross. I'm not going to complain. Great goal, my son. Maybe I should complain about a lack of goals and we'll get more goals go away. Van Persie scores. I think that's only going to be a consolation for Manchester United, unfortunately for them. Fortunately for us. Unless Van Persie... Okay, Van Persie hits the woodwork again. That's crazy. Can we break here? There's quite a lot of men up. Uh, unfortunately not. I want to score at every opportunity right now. Anyway, Royce with the ball in. I think that's going to be full time here. But 5-1. What a result and what a performance. Goals from a variety of attacking midfielders. Giroud. <laughs> maybe the player who you tipped to grab the goal for us. I don't think he got on the score sheet this game, did he? I think, I think there was two for Sanchez. One for Royce. One for Oxlade-Chamberlain. And one for Sterling. Well played, boys. That was a fantastic result. I'm very happy with how you played. It's a... I'm very, very happy. I'm happy for the fans. 5-1. What a result that is. That's incredible. And we are top of the league still. I'm going to be honest, guys. I did not expect that this episode, but hopefully you enjoyed regardless. Um, i just touch upon a few of the bits and bobs which are going at the club. Firstly, uh, Tallymans, who's one of our good youngsters, uh, the transfer window wrapped up and I was trying to find a loan deal for him and unfortunately I couldn't really find one which suited him. Since then, I've actually had a bid come in from Forrest to take him on loan for a month. So we've loaned him out to Nottingham Forest, or at least we will be. Um, looking at this, uh, we've got a lot of match reports and stuff on Sanchez. We should probably check the physio report more than anything. How long is he going to be out for? Tell us the news, Doc. Three weeks. It's not ideal, but it's okay. It's just a shame that on his first game back from injury, um, he's going to be uh, injured again for a little period of time. And that may well mean he misses the Tottenham game, unfortunately. But anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Next episode, episode three, will be the game against Tottenham. Uh, let me know what you thought of the performance. If you've got any questions with regards to the save, be it my tactics, be it my formation, be it the players, my signings, anything at all, leave it down in the comments as always. If you've enjoyed the video, smash the like button. Uh, if you're new to my channel, hit subscribe. You'll get notified whenever a new video goes up. And I'm frequently bringing out Football Magic 2015 content. And other than that, guys, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.